presidency and there are some big calls to be made tonight, uh, tight calls in close battleground states that will have everyone on the edge of their seat. And when it comes to projecting the winners, nobody does it better than our colleagues at ABC America and the number of crunches uh, change the decision desk. Laura Turner broke uh, one of them free to reveal how they make their tough picks. Well, Channel 9 Australia is partnering up with ABC America for this much-anticipated US election. Right now, I'm in the nerve centre here in New York City, where it's all going down on election night. With me here is Gary Langer. He is the head pollster for ABC News. The pressure's really going to be on you, isn't it? Well, we're okay. You know, we've done our pre-election polling and really done our best to figure out how and why the voters are coming to their choices in this election, which is a pretty profound one. Uh, on election night, now we'll be turning to the exit polls and looking at the polls of, of voters as they're leaving the polling places uh, again telling us not only who they supported but I think more basically and, and of greater interest uh, is uh, how and why what what brought them to the choices they made we'll be looking across groups and across issues uh, to get those answers and how quickly are you getting uh, all of that data from uh, the the exit polls into the decision desk and, and, and the analysis desk from, from, from the moment that they're taken? Well, the, so the data are collected in three waves. There's morning interviews, after, afternoon interviews, and evening interviews. And each wave is processed and delivered to us. In putting it out to Americans, what does it mean for them on election night? Well, I mean, who wins this election is one thing we will know in the fullness of time. But it's, of course, of great intense interest around the country. I'd suggest that even of greater importance is our coming to an understanding of how and why uh, whichever candidate wins manages to do so. How are groups dividing? What are the divisions? Where do we come together? Where do we disagree? For what reasons? What candidate attributes are attractive to us and which are difficult for us? Issue positions as well. These are kind of fundamental issues. The country comes together every four years to figure out where we're at and where we want to go and how we want to get there under whose leadership. This is a rare opportunity for us to sort of take all that in and try as best we can to understand it. It's pretty profound stuff and important. Well, there we have it. That was Gary Langer, the boss of all of the polling here at ABC News in America. Channel 9 will be partnering with ABC for all of our election coverage. It all happens right here in New York City. Laura Turner reporting there. Thank you very much for that. It is fascinating how they do all this. Um, something you'd seen uh, over the years, Harlan, um, not, and some of those results very soon. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. we're minutes away from some really big calls. I mean, we've got Indiana, we've got Georgia, we've got Kentucky. Uh, Virginia. Virginia's a must win, I think. Uh, or, I'm sorry, um, uh, Georgia's a must win for yeah. Donald Trump. If he Vermont. were to. It, yeah, yeah. It, look, if he were to pick up Virginia, that yeah. totally changes how we discuss this evening. And I know that there was massive turnout there, not just in Northern Virginia, where it's traditionally a Democratic base, but in Southern Virginia as well. So, you know, I mean, we may have some surprises here early in the night as well. Okay, Laurie? Well, I think that Georgia is important because that will show um, how uh, the, the two, candid two candidates are going mm. with the African-American vote particularly. Mm. But the, the, the states I particularly want to say are uh, Florida and North Carolina. They, they're the really big prizes. All right. We'll wait and see what uh, ABC uh, gives us in the next couple of minutes. We are not far away from the very first results, uh, for the early exit results of this election. You'll see them right after this break. Stay with us. You're watching Nine's U.S. election coverage, the race for the presidency. incredible medical mysteries. That's almost like a year child. Welcome back to Times Square, New York, New York. It is a wonderful place to be. The bright city lights and America is shining tonight as we head towards uh, some of the early results uh, that are coming in for us. Uh, Harlan, what are those areas going to be and what can we anticipate, do you think, are not far away? Well, I'm looking towards Indiana. Now, yeah. everybody's saying that, he, that uh, Trump's likely to take it. Um, but you have to remember that Obama actually won Indiana in 2008. And so what I'm looking for is not just that did Donald Trump win in Indiana, but by how much? Mm. Because Indiana is right next to Ohio, which is a must-win state for him if he's going to win the presidency. So while we Ohio will be later in the night, I think Indiana will tell us a lot about how this night will go. He was polling pretty well in Ohio. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think that he's going to win it, um, but you know, there, there will be a little bit of drama there because it's, it's a question of how much. Because it will also foreshadow how he might perform in Michigan. Mm. It, and, you know, we saw that there was record turnout in Michigan, the highest in history. Um, and the polls toward the end said that he was actually doing very well in Michigan. So, you know what? If he can perform well there in, in uh, coming out of tonight, he might win. It, it looks really like um, some of those results are, are coming in now. Um, it looks like... Uh, 
Vermont um, is being projected as the Hillary Clinton seat, Indiana. Uh, Donald Trump is being projected as, uh, as the winner there. And these are still projections yep. um, from what we can see here and what we can glean. Um, no surprises there, though, are there? No, no, yeah. it's exactly as you'd expect. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, 11 electoral votes in Indiana, as I've mentioned. Um, and uh, look, really, really early counting. Um, it has Donald Trump ahead um, something in the order of 19 to 3, according to the ABC, but that's, <laughs> that's pretty early counting. Um, and there we have the, um, the electoral votes there, 65% uh, Hillary Clinton to Donald Trump's figure. Um, so he's, uh, he's a little bit in front at the moment, but, um, yeah. but uh, it's all very, very um, predictable at this point. Absolutely. We'll see how long it lasts. And, and these numbers here, you, they're coming up with Hillary ahead, um, but that's because they're only reporting certain counties. Um, but based on exit polling, we know that he's performed better in other places, and yeah. they're able to model it out from there and project him the winner. Yeah, well, you mentioned Ohio. I mean, uh, he's got to win that because yeah. no, re no Republicans ever won the White House without Ohio, have they? A absolutely. Well, and, and he performs really well in those Rust Belt states because these are parts of the country that have been decimated by jobs that have been yeah. sent overseas to China and, and elsewhere. And so if he does well in Indiana and he does well in Ohio, yeah. I think there's reason to believe that he has a reasonable path to victory to the White House in the Midwest. This was, this like was the Brexit, Brexit, Brexit that he was Absolutely. talking about. Absolutely. I mean, some of the industrialized areas that, that This were, is the north of England. Yeah. This is the north of England. Mm. And so um, if he does well there, this changes how we think about this election. And just a week ago, Michigan wasn't even part of the discussion. Going into tonight, it was. So lots to, lots to look at here. All right. Well, um, yeah, still, um, still very, very early days. Um, um, also, coming up at about um, 7.30, so in the next half an hour, they'll start to flood through. But yeah, there's North Carolina as well, and, and as you mentioned, Ohio. Um, I think some of those some of those big ones, and then 8 p.m. I mean, in half an hour, the 8 p.m. local time you know, in Florida. Um, that's going to be a huge state, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't think he can win it without Florida. Mm. But that uh, that's definitely make or break for, for Trump. Okay, so all that uh, all that is coming up in the next hour. Yeah. Um, they're, they're the ones to watch out for, though certainly. Um, uh, also, I mean, some of those uh, some of those exit polls were, were interesting in terms of. Um, the credibility of, of both candidates, I think, um, and maybe we'll see some some of that uh, in the results as well coming out. Um, yeah. You know, just, just exactly what people thought um, of of Trump and Clinton, and how that that is reflected um, in some of those results, state by state. Absolutely, and in the exit polling we saw from uh, ABC across the street, we saw you know one of the questions they asked was who has the temperament to be president? Mm. And Hillary Clinton overwhelmingly won on that count, which is 56%. I think that's a pretty important question. If we're going to trust this person with the White House, we're trusting them with the nuclear codes, we're trusting mm. them with decisions about the, the economy and national security, and you want somebody with a steady hand. And temperament is <laughs> pretty basic to that. Well, that so. point of uh, President Obama is that if, it, if you can't trust a guy with a, a Twitter account, exactly. you trust him with the nuclear codes, exactly. it was pretty devastating. It was. I think that that was, I, I think that the Trump campaign leaked that out to show that they were in control of their candidate. Mm. But the fact that you have to do that, you have to show that you're in control of your candidate, says a lot about his, some of his, his drawbacks, for mm. sure. And I, I don't think it was a positive. I think that was a real mistake to leak. Uh, just to confirm, too, um, this is the... Um, the early polls, uh, early figures from the polls, um, just to confirm again that, um, that Indiana and Kentucky look like they've gone Donald Trump. Um, and uh, what was the last Vermont, one? Vermont Clinton. going to Hillary Clinton, yeah. yeah. Okay, but uh, as we said, um, um, pretty predictable results there. It doesn't really change much at all. 270, of course, uh, is the figure overall um, to take out the presidency. Um, and. Uh, during the course of the next hour or two, we'll see the, the, those numbers move uh, very quickly towards that 270. Robert Penfold uh, joins us now, who is with Hillary Clinton, has been for the last couple of days. He's always uh, on the money in terms of who he follows during election campaign, has been for years. <laughs> hey, Robbie, how are you going tonight? Uh, going well, Carl. Well, big excitement here when, uh, when she won Vermont, of course. The crowd's just starting to, to build up in here now. They've been out on the street until now, but I must say there's a lot more people outside than there are in, and that's because there's a feeling there might even be a bit of a, a concert happening out outside a little bit later on. But yes, slowly uh, we're getting, really for the first time now, the people inside here are only just getting to see some of these roles. They've only just got the TVs going now, so they're watching fairly closely and watching it. Well, now we're, now we're getting all of the Hillary Clinton music now. We've had this played over and over again at every rally that we've been to, I think we all know the words off by half. But um, yeah, as I said, the crowd's starting to build a bit and uh, we'll just sort of wait now, I think, until she starts to win a few more states before we see much more excitement coming through.
Well, it has been predictable so far, Rob, but um, what, are, what are Hillary's camp and, the, and various members um, of her team, um, when will they start to get um, a little bit excited and, and what results would they be looking for particularly? Well, you know, I think that they're already getting particularly excited, but they're really obviously watching for Florida as well. You know, with the polls closed there, they're, they're starting to think that that's going to be the big indicator as well. And Ohio, of course, as well. The, the sort of the states really that's going to show some sort of swing in their direction. And, uh, well, it was the number of Latinos, of course, the Spanish-speaking people that they saw uh, lining up down at the polls in Florida that really heartened them today. Uh, I think this goes way back, I think, probably to that very first day when Donald Trump announced, not far from here and not far from where you are at the moment, that here he was, he was uh, uh, going to become, he wanted to uh, sort of announce that he's going to be president and then, of course, said the Mexicans are uh, murderers and rapists. Well, a lot of people will say mm. if uh, he does lose tonight, a lot of that will go back to that first statement on the very first day that probably may well have lost him the election. Mm. Uh, Eighteen percent of, um, I think, the the, um, the Hispanic uh, voting public um, only supported Trump. Um, yeah. would, that, would that have been around about that Miami area, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and we saw in some of the early vote, I mean, she had a 115,000 vote lead out of Orange County mm. alone. I mean, that could be devastating. Huge. That could be the margin of victory, something around there. And so it, you, you really can't take it away from him. The fact that he was probably the best turnout tool for mm. the Democratic Party in but which, uh, which states is it going to change? I mean, given the, given the fact that the California mm -hmm. um, and, and the huge number of, uh, of, yep. of um, uh, Latino of, voters. The yeah, Latino voters there. Well, um, Nevada's you, one, one state if you change. You pick the majority up and pick up the whole, the, all the electoral colleges in right. that state. Uh, which one would it have changed? Say in Nevada? Well, Nevada's yeah. an important possibility, yeah. I think. Absolutely. Nevada's in there. I think Arizona's on the list. I mean, uh, the, you know, Nevada and Arizona, I think, are pretty central to his path to victory. And so I think the Latino vote will probably end up deciding this election. The Latino vote was surely is in support of uh, Hillary Clinton. So oh. how, could, how, how could he win Nevada then if they have to come out in force? Well, that's the question. Did they actually get out to vote? Mm. And based on the early vote, it looks like many of them did. Um, but it won't be enough to put it, her, her over the top unless they also turned out tonight. Yeah. So. All right, we'll wait and see. Um, but uh, it does seem as though they have turned out in, in record numbers, some Latino votes. And we'll see which way they, they swing during the course um, of the evening. But uh, there we have it at this point, uh, 19 to Trump, uh, 3 to Clinton, but very, very early days, very, um, very small numbers of votes um, have been counted. Uh, I wonder if, if Rob is still there. Um, Rob, if you're still there, I, I just wonder also, um, Harlan was mentioning something very interesting earlier on uh, in so far as her plans this evening and how close she may be celebrating to Donald Trump's um, particular building here in New York, just around the corner, Harley? Yeah, that's right, yeah. I mean, after I know her big speech tonight, she's going to be going to the Peninsula Hotel, which is a mere block from Trump Tower. Yeah. And sources say that the reason she picked that hotel of all the hotels in New York was to rub it in his face <laughs> if she wins tonight. So, yeah. And, Rob, that, that's true? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think that, you know, of course, Donald Trump thinks he owns New York. He's missing New York, so he was, and I think that you know, she's very much a presence here. At the moment, you know, I think uh, probably even down in Arkansas, there'll be a lot of people cheering for her to a degree as well, even though they don't win down that way. But I know they've still got a lot of supporters. Um, uh, Laura, our reporter, was down in Arkansas and she was surprised at the number of people that she found that still loved the Clintons and were very proud of what they achieved down there and how it gave yeah. them a path to the White House. But then, of course, they moved to, uh, uh, they had to move somewhere after um, Washington, D.C., and they chose eventually to live just outside of New York here. But yeah, she's a New Yorker now. Of course, she was the junior senator here as well, and said to be a fairly successful senator as well. So, you know, down in Arkansas and now in New York, they're saying, hey, we've had the first lady for eight years, we've had our junior senator, and now, by the look of it, we might even have a president. And, uh, you know, if you're going into the White House, they're pretty good <laughs> credentials to have. Her supporters argue, of course. That is true, Rob, and we'll be back with you throughout the night. It has been fervent the support for Hillary Clinton. Uh, good on you, Rob. Thank you very much for that, mate. And we'll have much more of our okay. election coverage coming up after these short messages. Uh, you're watching the Nine Network. Thanks for your company. Gentlemen, Jim.
the old school Sydney cop. He put his hands around her throat, Britain. Back to Times Square in the race for the presidency. It is great to have your company across Australia. Just a reminder of some of the early results that have come in in some of the states here. And um, as we've said and been reporting um, all over the last uh, half an hour or so, we expected these results to be the way they are. But, um, but Vermont um, has Clinton. gone to Clinton. And Indiana, Indiana and Kentucky to Donald Trump. Trump. Um, so we ha also have obviously our broadcast partners here in New York and uh, just a short time ago, just behind me, uh, Michael Strahan, a former NFL player, um, he's, uh, he's got a big map of America that he's been looking at very closely. Check this out, this is great. Uh, very nice setup, George, and, and thank you. You got Robin at the Jacob Javits Center. You have Amy at the Hilton. We're right here in the heart of New York City, right here in Times Square. And you see I'm standing on this map here. This is an interactive map. You have some red states, some blue states. These states light up when, the, when they're called, when, they're, when the call is given for Trump or for Clinton. It is a booth behind me that was built in partnership with Facebook. We're going to connect with our audience, We're going to, with hundreds of our audience members and hundreds of people out there. We're going to talk about the things that they are concerned about the most, things they're looking out for in this election. And we have a great crowd here. We have a lot of Trump supporters. You have a lot of Clinton supporters. They are excited. A lot of young voters, too, here, George. See some Pace University students here. So I'm going to stay out here in Times Square with the people, and we're going to have a conversation about this election. Looking forward to going back to you. Thank you very much, that Michael. Makes me sick how much money they spend on their election <laughs> coverage. Look like an ice skating rink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the other networks has got an ice skating rink. <laughs> it is amazing though, isn't it? I mean, um, when you consider um, how many people are watching on free to air TV and have been watching. Uh, on free-to-air TV during this whole election campaign, during the debates, 70 or 80 million people watching those debates. The voter turnouts at record numbers, um, in excess of 130, 140 million people. Yeah. Um, the voting that was early. There's, there was a level of engagement at, in this election um, that was incredible. It really was. I mean, it, look, it's great business. You know, that's why they're able yeah. to spend so much on these elaborate sets. Um, but it's also, I mean, I, I think that it's just testament to how important this is. And, you know, even though it's been sort of, you know, a sort of a depressing election season, Americans are more engaged, and I think mm. that more of them are going to turn out to vote than ever in history. So this is, this is an exciting night, for sure. But it's not necessarily a great uh, election for television, mm. because Donald Trump didn't uh, conduct a conventional campaign, didn't spend as much as uh, normal on television advertising. Mm. The, the, the TV advertising take is down, even though the, 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 the election cost, what, $2.65 billion. Mm. But some television channels have, have actually lost dough. That's because he didn't have the funding. So he, he claims to have spent $100 million. Yeah. Uh, would that be right? Uh, yeah, I mean, at, at probably at least, at least. I mean, look, it's a she, drop in the ocean, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It really is. So I mean, compared she, to what Hillary would have um, been Hillary spent. Clinton's campaign is a billion-dollar startup, basically. You know, they, they wow. rare, yeah, well, they, and I, we know from WikiLeaks that Eric Schmidt, the chairman of Google, wanted her to raise $1.5 million. So I think she even probably underperformed what they, what they expected. Mm. But that's in large part because she didn't have to raise as much money because she wasn't competing against Donald Trump. When you have two big campaigns looking to put up ads all over the country, it means that ads get more expensive. And they didn't have to do that. She basically was flying and, you know, he, was, he had no air cover. Um, and so she just carpet bombed him all year long. Because he relied on his ability to get free airtime. He, mm. you know, his sensational statements, you know, sort of mad actions. He gets free, free uh, publicity. Mm. He doesn't need to advertise. That was his view. But I think that he did. I mean, look, he just got, he, had, he was endlessly attacked mm. here in the States by the media and by Hillary Clinton through um, all these ads and through the super PACs that can also run ads. Yep. So she, he needed to run ads. He just never really got on the air until the last couple of weeks. I figure there's going to be no money for his party then tonight either. <laughs> yeah, well, I think he'll <laughs> throw a good party. Uh, Laura Turner uh, can, uh, can shed some light on that, I reckon. Uh, she joins us now. Hey, Laura, uh, what's going on? What is planned uh, for this evening? What are we going to see? Hello there, Carl. Well, it certainly uh, appears to be uh, a less grand affair here than for Hillary Clinton. This is a bit of a smaller arena. There are not any balloons on the ceiling. Certainly, we know no fireworks planned either. So it appears from the outset to be a, a bit more of a subdued event here. But I've got to say, since some of those... Uh, 
some of those results have started trickling through. The mood here is really bucked. Uh, we've heard uh, just in the last kind of 15 minutes some cheers coming from uh, the guests on the floor here. So certainly things have picked up in sort of the feeling here. And I actually was just listening in uh, on a conversation with, uh, with a Trump pollster here who was actually saying that he's very confident that uh, all of the, 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 the data models appear to be going to plan so far. And, you know, they're feeling confident that, that Trump could get over the line tonight. They're not exactly the more contentious um, uh, states, are they? I mean, it's, uh, these are all pretty predictable um, at this point. Um, but I'm sure that uh, they wanted to win them. If there was going to be any trend against Trump in, in some of those states, he would have been in massive trouble, wouldn't he? But back onto the party. What's he got planned? <laughs> Well, I think your guess is as good as mine in terms of what is going to go on behind the scenes with Donald Trump tonight. Uh, it's mm. been uh, it's been a, a little difficult to decipher what they uh, what they're thinking here. I mean, it's not the grand. Uh, you know, showman's uh, event that you would expect from Donald Trump. With Hillary, we've seen the big stage and the map of America on the ground. Here we have uh, a mm. ballroom with the, with the Donald Trump signs. They're still selling merchandise out the front. But as I said, no balloons and, and no real sense of celebration as yet. That is for sure. The figures are staggering, aren't they, how much they've spent on this election campaign. At the moment, uh, thank you, Laura. We'll talk to you very soon. At the moment, it stands at Trump 19, Clinton on three, but very early days. And um, some of those results are certainly not surprising. Um, they'll be consistent for a while until we get to some of the big states. Some of those big states are coming up right here, and you won't miss a thing on the Nine Network's election coverage of the U.S. race for the presidency. We're back in a moment. Australia for the RBT Spectacular One. Welcome back to the program. It is good to have your company. I hope you're enjoying our coverage of the US election. Our next guest lives and breathes politics. Jane Hall is a professor in journalism at American University in Washington, is the executive producer of the long running TV and radio series American Forum, and is a regular political commentator on numerous news stations. As we go to air, with Donald Trump 19 against Hillary Clinton's three. We'll get her thoughts on the process. Jane, uh, a very good evening to New York time. Uh, gee, it's been a dirty campaign, hasn't it? Um, any surprises yes, for you very... early on with these numbers? Well, uh, not so far. I mean, pretty soon we're, gonna, we're going to get mm. North Carolina, which is really split evenly uh, from what I'm hearing. Virginia, which the Democrats are counting on winning for Hillary Clinton. Uh, you can begin to look at... Uh, other states, but those two are very important. Uh, the polls close in Florida, which is very key if, at 8 o'clock. If Donald Trump doesn't win Florida, and if he probably is looking at a huge uh, uptick in Hispanic voting there and Latino voting there, if he doesn't win Florida, it's going to be a very long night for him. Uh, he has a narrower path to victory than, than Hillary Clinton does. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how the how he turns out the white working class uh, men who've been his base, who don't have a college degree. She has a huge advantage in suburban uh, college educated women. She's getting more of that, a 25 percent lead among that group. So the country is really split demographically. Those fan those fans of each one of them are concerned about the other person winning. There's, there's a lot of healing that's going to have to happen after this election. For sure. Um, there are the numbers for Florida as we speak right now. Only 30 percent counted, but 50 uh, percent Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump are uh, there on, on 48 percent. Um, by all reports, a huge number of Latinos also turning out to vote uh, in Florida. Uh, Harlan? Well, and what we're seeing right now is largely the early vote totals. This is what mm -hmm. you're seeing at this point because, you know, they're not counting yet um, what was cast today. Mm -hmm. um, and so we knew that she had a lead going into, uh, into today with early vote. But this margin is a little bit surprising. Uh, we also saw from some of the exit polls that um, in, out of Miami-Dade County that Rubio only lost that county by 12,000 votes. Trump lost it by 70,000, which mm. means that he's underperforming another Republican on his own ticket. So that's very concerning. That's mm. a telling. That's a tell. I mean, if that theme plays out throughout the rest of the country, uh, it could be bad. Mm. It could be really bad. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and Jane, what else are you keeping your eye on in the next uh, half an hour or so? Well, you know, Ohio is a huge state. Uh, Trump is hoping to win that. New Hampshire is a highly contested race. It only has 
four electoral college votes, but it's one of the key races for the majority of the Senate. The Democrats had hoped to really uh, put away winning a majority in the Senate. It now looks closer than that. If they get that, then it'll be easier. If Hillary Clinton wins, she will be able to get her nominee for the Supreme Court through more easily. It'll still be a divided government, uh, but New Hampshire's one to watch. All, all of these states, in many ways, are, are important uh, because he needs to win, he needs to flip a state, probably a blue state, to actually win the race. Mm. And I think we're going to be looking back and saying that his stances on immigration and the things that he said have motivated the Latino vote beyond what people had expected. People have not seen the Latino vote be this big a factor. Obviously, Barack Obama has been working to get the African American vote out. Uh, Donald Trump has ridden a wave yeah. of anger and discontent that is going to have to be listened to, and he's got voters. I mean, he definitely is going to do well uh, among that quality and that person that he's reached out to. But whether that's enough to have him win the presidency is really an open question right now. You know, um, I think that you're 100% right about that. We were saying earlier um, that the, those huge numbers are showing up. It does really announce to America um, the significance, the importance, and, and probably the future influence of the Latino vote and, and how much of a political force they are set to become as a result of this. And given what Harlan just said then about some of those states that, uh, that Donald Trump would try and secure and also flip, um, it may not be great for him tonight if it goes that way. Well, you know, one of the very interesting things about this is that Bernie Sanders and he spoke to a sense of disenfranchisement, a sense of being against Washington elites. But I think when people do the, the history on this, he demonized immigrants. And I think they are coming out and saying mm. that they are not in favor of being treated that way. And the country is changing. The United States demographics are changing. One of the things we'll probably be seeing is a somewhat different coalition for the Democrats. What do the Republicans do if she wins? You know, what's so interesting to me is that George W. Bush got nearly 40 percent of the Latino vote in 2004. So he'll be lucky if he breaks 20 percent, according to all the predictions. That doesn't mean that he's not going to win, but that is a significant change. And the women vote because of the comments that he has been seen making has also come out against him. So his comments probably galvanized a certain group. How big they are is what we're going to have to watch for throughout the night. He's going to win votes in the Rust Belt, in states where people have, he's going to win states, uh, he's going to win states where people have lost jobs. Uh, the Rust Belt, you know, they are hopeful about Pennsylvania, although the Clinton people are now more hopeful about Pennsylvania than they were. They just had a rally with 33,000 people and, and all the Obamas and all the Clintons. So I think the Clinton people are feeling more optimistic than the Trump people are tonight. Who's going to win? I think Hillary Clinton. Uh, is going to win and it will be historic whether she wins or whether Donald Trump wins but all the projections going in were that she had a three-point spread I think it could go higher than that again you know he may surprise us we've got what two percent of the vote in but the trends in the last few days have been that she has stabilized her lead and there just may not be enough people despite the enthusiasm of his people there may not be enough of them who voted mm. and came out to put him over the top as opposed to putting her over the top. Jane, L Laurie Oaks, if, if Hillary Clinton does win, will she have to reach out now to the people who, who have embraced Donald Trump, the, the, that, uh, that white, uh, uh, non-college edu educated section that feels disillusioned and, and left out of the mainstream of politics? She absolutely will have to. I mean, she will have, if she wins, she will have the challenge of reaching out to that group and saying that she has programs which will help them and that she is not out of touch and that Washington cares about them. You know, the really interesting thing is the lost jobs and I think the, the shifts in this country have been unsettling to a lot of people. Uh, you know, Bill Clinton was the man that pushed the NAFTA treaty. She has walked away from that. Uh, Donald Trump was against uh, a lot of the trade treaties and a lot of people in this country believe 
with him that those have hurt workers in the United States. So she's going to have to do that. She's going to also have to satisfy the Bernie Sanders supporters who believe in climate change, who want mm. uh, more liberal policies. So she is really going to have a challenge. She does have a history of working across the aisle back to the Senate. But, you know, it's, it's, it's really going to be challenging because Republicans a few days ago were talking about making steps to impeach her if she won before the FBI director cleared her essentially in the, mm. the flap over her emails. So if they win a Democratic majority in the Senate, that will be helpful. If they don't, then you're going to have a, a continued gridlock. I personally think the American people have had enough of gridlock uh, and have had enough of things not getting done and such hyper-partisanship. But our media and our election system have have amplified this. So how she can do that, it's, it's going to take a huge challenge. She's going to have to satisfy the left wing of her party and the centrist and reach across. And then she's going to have to deal with foreign policy like Syria, which the country has not been eager to get involved in. And she's been more interventionist in her foreign policy so far, at least in terms of what she said she would do. I mean, if we get a President Trump, you know, he's already saying he's not in favor of NATO alliances. He's already saying he wants to change trade treaties. He would do a fairly abrupt shift uh, and be able to do some pretty serious changes uh, when he gets into All office right. and if he gets into office. Thank you, Jane. Uh, plenty of work ahead of, uh, of both candidates, uh, irrespective of uh, who wins tonight. It's going to be a tough job in that U.S. presidency. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate uh, you being with us uh, this evening. Um, also, we can go back to some of the results now. Kentucky, Indiana, uh, and Vermont, and also West Virginia now, um, we believe, have gone to Donald Trump. No surprise. Yeah. But what I'm tracking is our friends over at ABC News, they show that now Donald Trump has just pulled ahead in Florida over... Uh, 3.9 million votes have been cast, mm. and there's only 41,000 votes between the two of them. I mean, this is going to be a really tight election. I mean, in just two minutes ago, you know, she was up by, by 15,000. So this is, I mean, a nail-biter. And that just depends on, on, on what particular parts. What, what counties are coming in. Yeah. But that show, I think that because it's they're just going back and forth here, I think it shows how tight this race is going to be. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, just for, for the uninitiated, for everyone back home who, who is certainly not used to too many U.S. election campaigns, the way that we're covering it here, too, when you see the numbers and, and you've, you have Trump at uh, 23 or something, 24, and she's at 3, um, just explain and why that is. Yeah, I mean, th those numbers are the uh, electoral college votes, mm. and they're allocated basically uh, based on population in each state. So when you look at that, I mean, those are representative of the number of basically congressmen that they have. Mm. I mean, it's a, it's a similar number. And so, um, you know, right now we've just seen more red states come in. Mm. This has nothing to do with he's not taking a real early mm. lead. Uh, it's just because those states were first. That's why he's a little bit ahead yeah. at this point. I think it's good context. Um, we'll be back with more analysis and uh, more seats and more of those results. Right after this short break, you are watching The Race for the Presidency. And we're back with more right after this. Australia's favorite couple. I'm Amy Farrah Fowler, you're Sheldon Cooper. They courted. I'm Square in New York, New York. It is wonderful to have your company on this uh, election day. We are going to get some more results now from Florida. Um, and Harlan, you were just looking at some of those figures that were coming through. And it looks as if Trump had taken um, a bit more of a decent lead in yeah, Florida. Yeah, it was neck and neck there for a while. But it looks like with 47% of the vote coming in here, he's got a 100,000 vote lead. Now, we still have a lot to yeah. go here, all right? Um, so just again, explain that. For, for, for everyone back home, it's all to do with where those votes are being counted along. There's the panhandle yeah. uh, further south around Miami. Right. So, so how does it vary across uh, yeah. Florida? Well, at this point, we've actually seen a pretty even split between Miami, which is a little bit more liberal, and the Redneck Riviera, which mm. is the panhandle of, yeah. uh, of Florida. Um, I love and, the panhandle, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it's nice over there. I mean, you know, it's not disparaging. They love it. They use it as, you know, uh, but... Um, you know, so it, it, it's a little evenly split here. I'm a little bit surprised in some of the results I've seen on a county-by-county county mm. basis. But, yeah, to your point, these results that we see are being reported as the county mm. counts the votes. Okay, lots of eyes uh, on this election right around the world, including uh, from our own Foreign Minister, Julie Bishop. This is what she had to say a short time ago. I'm following this election very closely. Uh, the Australian government is prepared for either a Clinton presidency or a Trump presidency. At this point, the first states are beginning to close their polls on the east coast but the polling will go on until 5 p.m. our time when 
the state of Alaska closes its polls. So we are watching closely and maintaining contact with our post in Washington to gain any early indications or trends. But the Australian government will work cooperatively. and productively with whomever the people of the United States chooses their president. Julie Bishop, uh, not long ago, and uh, yeah, as she said, she'll be watching it very closely, as will a number of governments around the world. Yeah. In terms of the Australian government, uh, working with Donald Trump might have been very difficult, given that he wanted to, to roll back some of those trade agreements. So it's a better outcome for Australia, is it, Laurie? Or what are your thoughts? Well, Stephen, assuming that Hillary Clinton yeah, wins, it's a better yeah. outcome for Australia. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Donald Trump does want to roll back trade agreements. Uh, less in world uh, security matters. Yeah. He wants to spend less on defence, make allies pay more. And he's pretty unpredictable on, on nuclear matters. So the Australian government would very much like Hillary Clinton to win, although uh, Malcolm Turnbull and Julie Bishop are not saying that because mm. they might have to work with mm. the Donald. So they don't want to get up his nose. He's a, he's a pretty vindictive character. Uh, but uh, they'd be happy if, uh, if Hillary Clinton wins. But they also know that she is going to have to adapt her policies as well because of what's been revealed about the mood in America on trade and on... Uh, on security matters. At least they'd know what she's most likely going to do as, as president. It will closely probably follow what Barack Obama has done. Well, they know it pretty you well. Know. She's been around a, a long yeah. time, and, uh, and both uh, Julie Bishop and Malcolm Turnbull know uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, they, they don't know Donald Trump, mm. and I, I don't think they want to. It'd be a fairly deep concern of winding back a trade agreement, I would have thought. <laughs> <Wouldn't it? laughs> yeah, but, but she's now committed to that. She, yeah. she was once in favour of the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership, the, the yeah. Asian Trade Agreement, mm. and she's now against it. I mean, she, she's seen which way the wind is blowing mm. in the US, and uh, she's putting that first. Harlan, some more numbers uh, there in North Carolina. Absolutely. I mean, this is a must-win for him. I think at this point, with 5% of the vote coming in, uh, this is a lot of early vote. Um, a tabulation, uh, though not all of it, because we know that they were a little bit closer than, than these polls uh, show. But we also see, I saw that ABC shows that Virginia's coming in with 11% of the vote reporting, and he's got a lead 53% to 42 uh, with a libertarian candidate, believe it or not, taking 3% of the vote. Um, mm -hmm. So that actually is just another interesting dynamic in this race, is that you have not just the top two candidates of Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. but you've got Gary Johnson and Jill Stein also coming in there, and maybe they could disrupt and pull enough of the vote away from mm -hmm. one of these candidates in key states to make a difference. All right. Um, for more than three decades as well, as we will continue to show those numbers as they, as they come through, and Harlan will continue his analysis. But Marvin Kalb was an award-winning political correspondent for the CBS and NBC News networks and covered some of the biggest political moments in American history. We're lucky enough to have him join us now from Washington. A big thrill. Uh, Marvin, uh, you've covered numerous U.S. selections. Uh, how does this one compare? Oh, well, this one is in a league of its own. Uh, this has been a most extraordinary campaign. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. Perhaps there have been others way back in American history, but I'm not familiar with it. This started in, a, um, in an extraordinary way, and it's ending in an extraordinary way. And it all goes back to a guy named Donald Trump. <laughs> How do you think it's going to end? Uh, from everything that I've been told today by a lot of different people, um, it's going to end with Hillary Clinton winning, and perhaps even winning big. If you take a state like Virginia, for example, the key vote for a Democrat is not in the Southwest, it's in the Northeast. And that's where she's going to come in probably very, very strong. Same thing in Florida. Uh, it's unclear about North Carolina, unclear about Ohio, but she's closer in Ohio than anybody on the Democratic side had anticipated. And so the sense is, among senior Democratic Party people, that she's going to win. She's going to win big, over 300 electoral votes. Well, there were some predictions, uh, too, from senior Democrats this morning, too. Uh, I noticed that she might get up to 330. Gee, that would be uh, quite the turn up, wouldn't it? Um, he has dined out, hasn't he, on the fact that uh, he is an outsider. At the time, as we know, there are, there are a lot of disenchanted people. Um, the number of disenchanted people would have to be significant for him to do a Brexit, um, as he was calling it as well, wouldn't it? Well, it would be, but the likelihood is that if you consider the Republican Party today, think of it as a split vessel. It's really cracked right down the middle. And there are establishment Republicans, um, the Speaker of the House, for example, the Leader of the Senate, 
These are people who will who know that when it's all over, they still have to have a Republican Party that looks good enough for a majority of the Americans to vote them into office. At the moment, it doesn't look that way because the other half of the Republican Party mm -hmm. is aligned with Donald Trump. And because of that alignment, the party itself is feeling historically weak, and they're going to have to do something very quick in order to recapture some kind of conservative elan, some spirit that motivates the party. At the moment, they don't have it. it it's Laurie Oaks. Uh, no, and if, if, uh, if Trump wins, he'll own the Republican Party, won't he? And if he loses, can people like Paul Ryan get it back anyway? Well, that's one of the interesting questions right now. Uh, today, for example, Donald Trump, who had been by his own staff pulled from the use of Twitter, is now back tweeting. And some of the things that he said, uh, has been saying today, are very similar to things that he said earlier in the campaign. They are untrue, but he is saying these things in order to get a bounce. But at this point, the people have voted. Almost all of the people have voted. And what we have an indication of right now is that he has lost. And he keeps on saying this remarkable thing, that if he loses, he said today, it would have been a waste of time, effort, and money on my part. He is not thinking about the country. He's thinking about his part and a loss of money. I mean, this, has, this is unprecedented in the history of this country. Hillary Clinton will, will still have, um, though, some, some very significant issues to work through, won't she? Oh, very definitely. Uh, one of the things that I was told today, that she has um, a very major decision that she's going to have to make, and she may already have made it. Do you go foreign? Do you go domestic? Likely, she goes domestic mm. in order to try to pull the people together once again. If she goes mm. domestic, does she then try to reach to the left of her party, take care of the Bernie Sanders people, or does she go down the middle and reach to the Republicans, people like Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the, of the House, and say, you and I have a deal right now. We are capable of doing something in the best interest of the American people. Shouldn't we do that rather than think about anything else? And my sense is, She's a very pragmatic person, and she's going to reach for something that makes sense. And if they can have a, a uh, bill, for example, proposed by Republicans and Democrats, show that the country can do something together, that would be an enormous step forward for a new president. Marvin, wonderful to talk to you. I appreciate um, you spending some time with us this evening. It's a real thrill to talk to you. Um, if you know our campaign's better than you, um, and we really appreciate you talking to our audience back in Australia. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure. Okay, there is a, a whole bunch of numbers that have just come through, and, and Harlan is about to analyse those, but we'll take a break and be back with more right after these short messages. Stay with us. Of the final two weeks,